welcome back to Critter Ed TV. I'm Amelia and as always, this is my little sister Talia. Hi! Today you guys will be learning about the Mexican Freetail Bat, another one of the world's most misunderstood critters. We're not afraid of them, so you shouldn't be either. Hello everyone and welcome back to Critter Ed TV. Clint, today we are gonna be taking our viewers on a really awesome urban nature adventure. That's right, you guys are in for a real treat. We're gonna take you to view a colony of bats as they leave their roost under a local bridge in search of insects. And a viewing opportunity like this only happens a few places around the world with Tucson, Arizona being one of them. Yeah, and it's the way this bridge is constructed that makes it such a special habitat for the bats. That's right, the expansion joints that are part of the, the bridge's engineering allows the bats to be able to have a perfect spot to be able to roost, which we'll get to why that is in a little bit. But Clint, what is one thing about this bridge that makes it so famous here in Tucson, Arizona to be able to view this amazing site? It's definitely the eight and a half foot long steel sculpture of a bat riding a bicycle that rises up beside the bridge. It's called Batty Biker, and it was created by artist Stephen Fairfield, who designed it to represent both the human and bat activity of the bridge and the bike path that runs beneath it. Yeah, it's a perfect example of how humans and animals can coexist together, and with just a little bit of planning, how we can actually help animals thrive. Uh, so Clint, are you ready to grab Amelia and Talia and go check out some bats? That I am always ready to see the bats. All right, before we do, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, like and share all of our videos, and ring that bell for the notifications. Yep, I think they know that already, so let's just go. All right, let's do it. We've made it to the bridge here at Pantail on Broadway to see... The Mexican free-tailed bat. The Mexican free-tailed bat. And tell you how big are they? They're the size of a human thumb. Only the size of a human thumb. But Amelia, what's their wingspan? 10 to 12 inches. 10 to 12 inches. Well, the sun is setting. It's getting dark. They're about ready to come out. So let's go check them out. Bats are naturally attracted to crevices and deep recesses that can protect them from the elements and potential predators. So expansion joints and bridges make the perfect spot for them to roost. Did you know bats use echolocation to navigate and hunt for their food? Echolocation is an amazing adaptation that bats have that allows them to bounce chirps off of objects, which lets them navigate through the night and find their food. And with each bat weighing only half an ounce, it's really their strength in numbers that allows this Pantano colony alone to eat almost two tons of insects per season. So if you don't like mosquitoes, you should love bats. Did you know that 500 baby Mexican free-tailed bats can roost in one square foot? Did you know that the Mexican free-tailed bat can fly up to 10,000 feet? 10,000 feet? Clint, that's pretty high. Yeah, and they're known as the jets of the bat world, flying horizontally as fast as 60 miles per hour, with unconfirmed reports of up to 100 miles per hour. 
which makes them one of the fastest animals on Earth. What an extraordinary species. Did you know mother bats can find their babies just by the sound of the call? Wow, what an amazing experience we had last night watching the Mexican free tail bats fly out for the Pantano Bridge. I don't care who you are or where you're from, that is bucket list worthy. I never get sick of going to see the bats. Are you guys ready to go again? Yeah, it was super cool. Now, one thing to note if you do want to see the bats here in Tucson is that they're only here during certain months of the year. Uh, Talia, what are those months? April to October. And Amelia, why are those months important to the bats? They like the warmth and the bugs that come with it. That's right. So if you want to see them, you need to come during the summertime, the early fall, or spring because the bats do go back to Mexico during the winter time. It is cheaper to visit Tucson during those times of year. And if you you like a dry heat, you're going to love the weather. Absolutely. Now you might at this point think that we're done with our bat episode, but we still need to talk about one of the most important aspects of the human bat relationship. You mean like what we should do if we find one on the ground? That's exactly right. Everyone should know what to do with a bat if it's on the ground, if they live in a place that has a high bat concentration like Tucson, Arizona. Talia, what's the most important thing people should do when they find a bat on the ground? Don't touch it. You don't know if it's sick or just resting. So the best thing you can do is leave it alone. That's right. Bats sometimes host diseases that can infect humans like rabies. But don't fear bats on the ground because these diseases are rare and treatable. There are other more common reasons that bats are found on the ground. Talia, what's one of those? Mid-air collisions with other bats. Yes. Echolocation is an amazing adaptation that allows bats to navigate in total darkness, but it is imperfect. Collisions with other bats, power lines, and even trees are more common than you think. Sometimes a bat on the ground is just stunned and needs time to recover before it flies off to rejoin its colony. Amelia, what's another vital step people should take if they find a live bat on the ground? We should observe it as long as we can. If it flies off, your job is done. If not, call your local game and fish office or humane society for instructions or to have a professional remove the bat. Absolutely. Never move a wild animal that is sick or distressed unless you have the proper training. Bats won't understand that you are trying to help them and will bite in self-defense. And one last thing to keep in mind, especially if you live in a place with lots of predators. It may feel sad, but if a roadrunner, bobcat, or hawk sees your bat on the ground, sometimes it's better to take a step back and let nature run its course. We encounter this roadrunner at the Batty Bridge almost every time we visit. It's here to do a job by removing sick and injured bats so the rest of the colony can thrive. It has its own babies to feed, and this is just how nature works. Well, it's called the circle of life for a reason, and you'll be happy to know that the bat we filmed did recover, flew off into the night sky to help us humans by eating all those mosquitoes. We just didn't catch that part on camera because someone forgot dead. Yeah, we all know whose fault that is. All right, let's not worry about who missed the bat flying off, and we hope you enjoyed this urban bat adventure. And join us next episode where we learn about another very misunderstood critter, the iconic Arizona blonde tarantula. That one's my favorite. And we hope it'll be one of your favorites too. So join us next time on Critter Ed TV, where fear becomes wonder and wonder becomes passion. Thank you. Bye, Bye guys. Bye.